you fret, you pay, you worry, you stress, you plan, you do all the work. He doesn't have a problem, you do. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my page, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. I am Mia and today we are going to be continuing our video series on the book Boundaries. When to say yes, how to say no, and take control of your life. I think it actually says to take control, but I like and better. With all that being said, maybe this person in your life that you're fretting about, worrying about, stressing about, whatever, isn't your husband. Maybe it's your child, maybe it's your coworker, maybe it's your boss. Whoever it is, this could definitely apply to you. Maybe it's your mother, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's your friend. I don't know why I just thought of a bunch of other people, but there are a lot of people in your life that you have relationships with, and boundaries is not just for marriage. Boundary is for all relationships that we have with people. Boundaries are rooted in biblical principles, so today we're going to be doing a lot of scripture reading. I will be sharing a bunch of verses on the screen, so I would definitely advise you guys, pause, take a screenshot, and make sure that you get some of those verses down, highlight them, go into your Bible, and really just dig into this information because it is very biblically backed. With all that being said, I do just want to start this off with a caveat that boundaries, natural consequences, don't mean that we don't love someone. That's not what's at question. That's not what's at question here at all. That's not what's at question. That's not what's in question. I don't know the phrase, but that is not what we are questioning. What we are questioning and what you should be asking yourself is, is what you are doing helping? Now, my favorite example from this book that I have remembered, most of the time when you read books, they'll say, oh, like, if you get one thing out of this book, it's worth it. With this book, what I've always remembered is this one example really early in the book, and that is... The example that, you know, maybe you're watering your grass every single day, right? But your water is going on to your neighbor's yard. So in this example, that might be that you're watering your boss's yard. So when they open their door, their grass is green. They didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to pay for it. They didn't have to think about it, plan it. They just walked outside and their grass is green and they're not going to ask questions about it. Whereas because your water is going onto their lawn, your water is now, your water, your grass is now dying. It's dehydrated. In this example, it just shows the nature of boundaries in a physical way to help understand mentally that if you are watering your grass because your grass and your property and your boundary lines are your responsibility and if they were watering their grass because same thing that is their responsibility then it would be a lot more evident to them that they have a problem because they're not thinking about it they're not worrying about it they're not doing anything about it so their grass would be dead they would be walking on dirt and then they would realize um i have a problem i need to do something about it whereas you are kind of interfering with that process by trying to be like the person that like makes someone else whole to be their everything and to take responsibility for what they are ultimately responsible for and then in the end it's your property that ends up what's that word offense so that is why boundaries are biblical because we don't want that happening. We don't want to feel that way. Obviously, this doesn't mean you can't help somebody else out, but that is what we're going to be kind of breaking down and seeing the difference between those two. So jumping right into the Bible, Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Boundaries are biblical. I'm going to say it a thousand times. Their intentions are not to hurt. The intention of boundaries is to, one, recognize and identify where they need to be established, and two, to ultimately increase and preserve love. So for instance, if you are in a relationship with somebody who's constantly 
losing their temper or cussing and shouting, breaking things, what you want to do is preserve the relationship. So having a boundary of saying, when you act this way, I'm going to remove myself from that environment. That is then preserving the relationship because that is what ultimately like erodes the relationship and leads to demise in the relationship. And that's not what we want. What we want is to encourage individual growth as well as preserving and protecting what is already there. That's healthy. <laughs> but with that being said, the Bible is probably the best place for some examples of boundaries. The Bible actually commands us to guard our treasures so that other people won't steal them. I mean, you know, when people see people with good things, they're constantly wanting to steal that, wanting to attack that. That is what the devil does. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And what we want to do is to separate our pearls from pigs. We do not want to be mixing what God has blessed us with, with wickedness and evilness. We want to have some sort of filter for letting the good in, keeping that in, maintaining our lawn, and letting out the pigs and the nastiness. We want to have a sort of flexible flow of things because ultimately we're not called to be hoarders. So what I'm not saying is, oh, like you should just be like holding on to everything with a tight fist. We are called to live with our, our hands wide open, which is why I'll say it a gazillion times. The Bible, if you pick it apart with little verses, you can manipulate it in a way that serves, you know, what you're thinking or what you're feeling. But if you look at it as a whole, the Bible is the best blueprint for how we should be living our lives. And that is why it tells us to meditate on this word day and night so that we can live in a way that is wise. So we can have godly wisdom, which is living in a way that honors God, living Christ-like lives. The Bible is so clear about boundaries and what is good for us and what is not good for us. And often it is our family of origins, our friends, our job, the shows that we watch, culture, previous relationships. It is all of those things that confuse what is healthy and biblical and God honoring with what is right to the mass majority. So that leads me into my second point, which is that we are responsible to people, not for people. Now what I mean by that is straight out of Galatians 6, 2, which commands us to carry each other's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. This book is very clear that denying ourselves to help others when they cannot, keyword, when they cannot, is showing Christ's sacrificial love. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And like I said, don't just pick one verse and then have that be the end all be all. You need the entire context. So my encouragement for you guys in all of this is to read the full context, get a Bible that tells you who the author is talking to, what the time is, maybe read some commentary, but be sure not to just pick out a few words or verses and not know the entirety of what they mean before you start applying that to your life. So continuing in Galatians, 6 5 says, for each one should carry their own load. What I learned from this book is that burden in Greek, um, which is the original language of this book, means like boulder. So I like to think of it as like a snowball, not a snowball, snowballs are tiny, more like an avalanche. So like a big, huge ball of snow that is just tumbling downhill and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That kind of snowball, not a little one. And to the contrary, a load means, in Greek, it means like cargo or 
daily toil. So I like to think of that as like your backpack. So like when I was a little kid, you know, even when you're like four or five, it's so funny because the backpacks are huge. But like you had to carry your own backpack. You had to put your backpack on your back every single day. And that was your responsibility to carry your own backpack. Now in that backpack, under your responsibilities are your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, your actions. Those are in your backpack and everybody else's are in all of their backpacks. You are not responsible for what is in someone else's backpack, but vice versa. They are not responsible for what's in your backpack. So some issues that arise out of this is either A, we are dealing with a huge snowball or a boulder and we are refusing to accept help or B, we're just carrying a little backpack and expecting everybody else to help us. What that kind of looks like in real life is kind of that phenomenon. I've seen it on TikTok, so I know it's not just me. Where, you know, when your husband is home, you don't know how to take out the trash or pick up things that are heavy or, you know, do anything. But when he's not home, we're out here moving dressers and taking apart beds and putting things together and what building houses when our husband is at home. But when he gets home, hey, honey, can you, can you do this? Because I don't know how to do it. What I'm not saying is that your husband shouldn't carry your bags through the airport. I'm not saying that he shouldn't help you just because it's, you know, a backpack. My point is, if this is something that is happening consistently, that is how you know that you have a boundary issue because either A, it's causing perpetual pain, or B, it is curating irresponsibility in either yourself or the other person. So maybe it isn't your spouse, maybe it's your boss and they're constantly asking you to step up and do their work for them and that is causing you pain, that's causing you stress, they're irresponsible, this has been going on for years, no one notices, they're constantly getting raises and praises and you're the one who's doing all the work. Now, like we discussed with the pigs, our goal of boundaries is to let in the things that are nurturing and to put out the things that are destructive to our mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, all of our health, our well-being as a person. Now, if you're looking at boundaries as a fence, so going back to the lawn, obviously we all know like I own my house, so my property is mine. I have a fence around my yard. You had to get one because I got a pool. So I know within this fence is my property. This is my lawn. This is what I have to keep green or not keep green. That's my business. But sometimes things hop the fence. Sometimes, you know, your feelings and your emotions, they aren't nurturing you. They aren't making your grass green. And those are things that need to be let out. So as far as like what I meant when I had said before that like boundaries need to be fluid, what I mean is that your fence needs to be strong enough to keep out things that are going to hurt you or harm you and your wholeness and your well-being. But you also need a sort of like a gate or a filter in order to let those things out that are bad, but also to let in things that are good and also to flow those good things and those blessings out to other people. I don't want this to be perceived as, you know, my grass is green and I ain't worried about nobody else. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it needs to be fluid in the fact, in the fact that, in the fact that, in the sense that you have a fence around what is yours. You're aware of what is your responsibility, but that it's not to the point where you're 
walled off where you're either storing up for yourself all this happiness and not worrying about anybody else, not, you know, letting that flow through you so that God could, you know, bless that as well. Or on the contrary, that you're so walled in that like, you're stressed and you're depressed and you're hurt and you're lonely and nobody knows because there's no fence for you to allow those bad things out to confess your hurts and your pains and your sins to other people to allow them to speak into your life and to come in and to refresh you and to help you. We want to have a fence where we can let good things in and let good people in and let the things we've got in. And we also want to be able to shut the gates and to not allow bad things in. So that is kind of the nuance of biblical boundaries. So my challenge for you guys in all of this is don't become walled off. As we go through this series, if you recognize you're already walled off, maybe start breaking down those walls. Don't let the enemy have a stronghold in your life. Maybe it's time to let those walls down and to build up some walls that are standing for the things of God. Maybe it's that you're joining community. We are made to be in community with each other so that we can help each other. The Bible is very clear about that. So my encouragement for you guys is that if you are silently suffering, that you wouldn't do that anymore, that you would let all of that out and let God in and let him use you to speak to other people, but also let him use other people to speak to you. With all that being said, before you guys go, make sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. I do post two videos a week, so make sure your notifications are on so you know as soon as the next video is up. But until then, be blessed, and I'll see you guys next time.